and welcome to this David Icke Dot Connector video cast. I'm in a hotel room in, in Colchester, uh, speaking here and then going off to a uh, crew and then back down to Margate and finishing off the UK tour in uh, the Isle of Wight on uh, December the 14th. And um, it's it's been terrific. Uh, audiences have been lovely all over the country, in Scotland, Wales and across England. But um, in the last um, few days, apparently I'm, uh, I'm someone that everyone should be terrified of. And there's been a number of efforts to promote me and present me as some kind of demonic racist. And it's extraordinary the way that you can be so fundamentally misrepresented for the simple the simple reason the simple goal of preventing what you're saying being heard by the public and so um i'm um i'm someone that now people are being told to hate and told is horrible i mean lovable me what and it's so applicable, this quote from George Orwell. In a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And that's what it's become increasingly. Indeed, uh, telling the truth with the use of free speech is now the new evil, which mustn't be allowed. And you see, there is a, an agenda to create a situation demonstrably unfolding by the, by the day, almost now, to create a situation where, eventually, no one will ever see any information in the public arena or hear any opinion that the system, the state doesn't want you to hear or see. And we're moving closer and closer and closer towards that as this censorship goes into overdrive, into the stratosphere. Now, you know, people like Mandela and Gandhi, Martin Luther King, in their time were also described as horrible people who should be hated and feared and ironically these people Mandela, uh, Gandhi, Martin Luther King were heroes of the so-called left, the liberal left and they were castigated, demonized and the Efforts were made to shut them up and silence them by the establishment, by the established order, by the established authority, by what people would call right-wing authority and establishment. The greatest irony today is that what the establishment did to them, these once liberal heroes, is now being done to others by people who call themselves progressive, which is the new uh, buzz term for what is alleged to be the liberal left, but actually the progressive mindset as hijacked usurped and taken over the liberal left and the traditional left and has started to act ever more, not liberally, but fascistically. And so we have a situation today where these progressives, which came out of places like California and swept across America and now is in Europe and Britain more and more, are claiming to be the successors 
to the great civil rights movement of the 60s and others. When they are acting in exactly the same way that the civil rights movement emerged to challenge from the establishment of the day. And so we have gone through an extraordinary inversion and hijack of what was called the former left. And it has been taken over by a mentality that calls itself anti-fascist while using all the propaganda and freedom suppressing techniques that we see with fascists and other um, tyrannies. And to a large part, I say that this transformation from a liberal left to a pseudo liberal fascistic left has been done overwhelmingly thanks to the money handed out by the billionaire George Soros, who has spoken publicly about the fact that he does not take into account social consequences when he does his financial investment and targeting. Because, he says, I'm there to make money. And someone with that mentality, that attitude, what I would call callous attitude, is handing out literally tens of billions of dollars to, quote, progressive groups and NGOs in the Americas and in Europe, particularly, to fund those that claim to have a social conscience when he has said publicly that basically he doesn't have one. And yet we have reached the point where if you challenge Soros and what he's doing across a large um, spectrum of events, subjects and situations, then you become a racist and someone to be demonized. This is what the old left used to stand for, or said it stood for anyway. This is a quote by Noam Chomsky, again, one of the heroes of the traditional left, who said, if we do not believe in freedom of speech for those we despise, we do not believe in it at all. Because unless we believe in free speech for everyone, there is no freedom of speech. There is only the freedom, or the illusion of freedom, to conform to what is allowed to be said and what views are allowed to be had, and not to express your freedom of view and your freedom of speech if it goes out of those parameters. So there is no freedom of speech. And of course the idea is to destroy freedom of speech because it has to be destroyed if you are going to have a situation where the public in the public arena can only see a, uh, a band of information and opinion that is suitable to the authorities to reach that situation, freedom of speech has got to go. Because while there's freedom to speak, there's freedom to challenge that that limitation of what we can see in here and that narrative of what we are allowed to see in here. So freedom of speech is being demonized because while freedom of speech exists, this total control of information cannot be 
imposed. And um, here's another quote from George Orwell, appropriately. If liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. And that is, um, of course, going on from the Noam Chomsky quote. If you can't tell people what they don't want to hear, there's no freedom of speech. The only speech possible in that situation is repeating what people do want to hear, which is what's happening with this progressive, fascistic mob mentality, which says, if we don't agree with what you're saying, not that they overwhelmingly ever try to find out the truth, then you shouldn't be allowed to say it. You should be banned. And this is how this, this, is how this process goes. This is how this, I was going to say thought process, but I was being optimistic with thought process. But this is how this, this sequence goes in the minds of these people. I am right, that's what they say. I am right, and therefore anyone who disagrees with me must be wrong. And if they're wrong, why should they have freedom of speech to be wrong? This is the actual mentality that you see in so many people. And uh, what has happened in the last seven days uh, is that I was going around the country and Scotland and Wales and lovely audiences and um, exchanging information and then they decide what they, um, what they think of it. That's the whole point. Um, and I was speaking in Watford and then suddenly uh, when I came to the Watford event uh, there was an organisation that has basically hijacked a, a chunk of the Labour Party called Momentum. Uh, basically, the Labour Party today, the opposition party in Britain, um, is uh, a, uh, I wouldn't say a coalition, it's certainly not a coalition, but it's in two parts. You've got the Blairite Labour Party, which is really conservative, um, and um, Blair is actually an asset of the same web that controls Soros, ironically. And then you've got another group around Corbyn, which is basically... Um, centered on this organization started by a, 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 a rich guy who um, whose heart must bleed for the the poor and needy um, called John Lansman and this momentum is uh, massively influential now within the Corbyn Labour Party and they started um, to urge people to come and protest at my event, telling them I was this, that and the other. Uh, doing all the things that the system wants them to do, because the system doesn't want my information circulating. And uh, a handful turned up. But then uh, there was a, an article written by uh, an organisation. It's actually called um, Hope Not Hate, but I call it Hate Not Hope, because I prefer to use the, the title that basically describes what it's about. See, what you have with these um, anti-hate groups is the irony of ironies, again, that they set out to get people to hate their targets. So they're actually hate groups. I don't want people to hate anybody. But they want people to hate their targets and then justify their silence. Demonization, silence. Demonize, silence. This is the technique. And, and this hate, not hope, uh, wrote an article about my talk in, um, in Watford that was so grotesquely, outrageously, mendaciously misrepresenting what I said and what I stand for. It's shocking. Of course, people that went to Watford and people who've gone to these other events that I've spoken at are understandably utterly shocked at what they heard compared with what this report says I'm talking about. All the things uh, I, I say about the fact that we're all one consciousness having different experiences and thus to identify with race and um, 
and the labels of this life is completely missing the point that we are all the same consciousness doesn't matter if you're Jewish or uh, uh, Muslim Christian non-religious black white any color you can think of don't matter it's just an experience and there, therefore um, to self-identify with race and judge others with race and all these other things um, is is childlike and a complete misunderstanding of what reality is and, and the nature of who we are so all that which of course is fundamentally um, demolishing the idea that I'm uh, in any way racist I don't have a racist cell in my body I think it's, it's, it's ridiculous but to cover all that would demolish the, the demonization. So they don't, they dismiss it with, with uh, in, in effect, it's new age rubbish, that, that's basically how that's sorted. And then they focus on the fact, um, twisting what I'm saying, um, to, um, to continue the demonization. I'll just give you an example. Um, there was there's an article written, um, another article, different article, by a guy called, De a guy called David Collier. And this is what he says in this article. For five days, this is after the event, I have been living in the poison. That is David Icke. Forgive me if I'm a little shaky. <laughs> and at about two seconds later, he starts off uh, talking about the talk. Ike doesn't stand up and publicly attack Jews. Talk me through that one. But what they say is, you see, he doesn't publicly attack Jews, but when he talks about the hidden hand and the 1%, that's who he means. That's how they go about it. What about, what about all those people in the square in New York when we had the Occupy movement challenging Wall Street? They were talking about the 1%. Were they all racist talking about Jewish people? It's hysterical if it wasn't so tragic. And so we um, are in this bizarre situation where those who um, claim to come from the liberal left, who were people who in the past would have challenged the destruction of free speech, are now demonizing people to bring about the end of free speech. And by the way, they're in alignment, this momentum, um, in terms of their attacks on me, with this um, organization, the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. I, I mean, the ironies just keep flowing. The Campaign Against Anti-Semitism was one of the chief um, protagonists in um, demonizing the Labour Party leader, Jeremy Corbyn, as an anti-Semite, in an effort to pressure the Labour Party, and of course their backbone went, of course, always does, to accept a ludicrously broad definition of um, anti-Semitism that includes the criticism of Israel, which is what it's all about, it's about stopping criticism of Israel, nothing to do with protecting Jewish people. And um, this campaign against anti-Semitism is chaired by a man called Gideon Falter. Gideon Falter is a British board member of something called the Jewish National Fund. The Jewish National Fund, since the turn of the 20th century, has been buying up land in Palestine from donations from around the world. And once they own the land, only Jewish people and no one else can live on that land. Now that, by any criteria, is real estate apartheid. Have any of these characters, hate not hope and momentum, ever protested outside a place where Gideon Falter was speaking? Any of these media interviews that give him softball questions every time he comes on and lambasts others for racism, asked him, uh, Mr. Fulcher, is this like kind of 
contradiction here? No. Because this is, in its totality, for most of these people have no idea, an effort to silence all challenge to the official narrative of everything. And so we come to this question, the question that's always vital to ask, who benefits? Who benefits from people like me being silenced? Well, who benefits? Only one group of people benefit, and that's anyone that doesn't want my information circulating about how the world is controlled by people, networks, secret societies that are not the people we see in the public arena. The fact that they're here today, gone tomorrow, politicians, whether they're Trump, Theresa May, Macron, Merkel, are just that, here today, gone tomorrow, politicians. But behind, in the shadows, is a permanent government that's always there that controls finance, that controls the military, that controls the intelligence networks, controls government administration, controls corporations, controls the banking system. And what they, what they do, this is what this thing with this David Collier uh, was all about that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, we've now reached the point where if you talk about a network manipulating global events even though you're not saying it's Jewish by by just saying that you are anti-semitic and you are racist so this has been manipulated to the point where just suggesting that the official story of how things come about in the world is not true and actually there's a global network that's pushing the world in a particular direction, blatantly obvious, then that's racist. And you know what that is? That's a grotesque abuse of racism and an abuse of those you are exploiting by saying it's to stop racism against these people, when actually what it is, is to stop the free flow of information for people to see and hear another version of how the world is run and controlled. And um, who benefits? And if that's who benefits, well, we've got a choice, and it's probably a mixture of the two. Either the people trying to silence people like me are just arrogant people that think only their view um, matters, or they can be completely stupid people who are waving away the truth and calling it racism. And there'll be many people like that. They will. Um, but at the core of the core, this campaign of demonization against people with a different view of the world is coldly calculated to bring about the situation where only what authority wants you to see and hear do you ever see and hear and you know <laughs> put this little me on here um it's kind of surreal sometimes nearly 30 years ago and for many years after that many years after that i was the resident nutter apparently um, I was ridiculed to historic levels and I was a madman and so um, that was the the way of dismissing me and demonizing me uh, oh I don't listen to him he's, he's mad he is and then I went through a period where basically I was ignored well ignored in the mainstream but not uh, by people with a mind of their own who actually bothered to find out what I was saying. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, um, I'm now the bad guy. Um, and I'm dangerous. Um, I mean, I'm dangerous. 
I'm part of no organisation, no political movement. I mean, you're looking at it. But somehow, I'm dangerous. I must be demonised. Condemn him. What they're terrified of is what I'm saying. And even more terrified of is that people who've got a mind of their own, like I say, and have actually looked what I'm saying, are listening and realising it makes far more sense than what we're being told from the establishment sources. And by establishment sources, I include the political right, with exceptions, the political centre and the political left, with exceptions. So, um, is it true? Is there any truth in it? Because if there's a fraction of truth in what I'm saying, then we are in a very different world to the one people think they live in. But this is how it works. It's a conspiracy theory. You know what, what are these, these articles this week? was basically indicating when they must stop the circulation of conspiracy theories. Well, first of all, where did the term conspiracy theory and conspiracy theories come from? It came from the CIA in the 60s, who contacted major media, urging them to use those terms as a term of derision and discrediting of those who had refused to accept that President Kennedy, who was shot in the forehead, clearly from the Zabruda film, taken by an onlooker, was clearly shot in the forehead, but the bullet that shot him, according to the official story, came from behind. What did he do? U-turns. That's where conspiracy theory and conspiracy theories come from, and, 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 and these terms. And now they're being used by the media all these years later. No idea where they started out. And by people like this, no idea where they started out. And they're used as terms of discrediting people. You look at the dictionary definition of a conspiracy and it's two or more people conspiring together to bring about a particular end, usually illegal and certainly unpleasant most of the time. And that's all conspiracies are. But because there are conspiracies, the very term conspiracy has to be demonized to push people away from actually looking at the evidence that it's there, but the question of is it true is not asked. Just by definition it can't be true. And if you're saying, you see, keep coming back to this central theme, that we must stop the circulation of conspiracy theories, which is what? Not accepting the official version of, of um, everything. Then you are moving towards that very situation I say the goal is, which is to control what people see and hear in totality, so you never hear anything else that the authorities don't want you to have access to. So this is um, this is where it goes. This one gone too far. There, go back one. Another one. Yeah, this one. Um, all rulers, Orwell said, um, in all ages have tried to impose a false view of the world upon their followers. And that's absolutely true. All rulers try to mislead the public of what is true and what isn't to suit the agenda of the rulers. And so once you have a situation where you cannot challenge those untruths, those falsehoods, and this is what these organisations want, bizarrely, then all you're left with are unchallenged falsehoods. And uh, this is um, Adolf Hitler. And um, this quote encapsulates it all, really. The best way to take control over a people and control them utterly is to take a little of their freedom at a time to erode rights by a thousand tiny and almost imperceptibly, uh, imperceptible reductions. In this way, the people will not see those rights and freedoms being removed until past the point at which these changes cannot be reversed. 
that is what is happening, although it's reached a point now where it's getting so fast that anyone with a brain on active duty can see it. Which then brings us back here. This progressive mentality calls itself anti-fascist while using the very techniques that fascist and Stalinist and tyrannical regimes the world over use, which is to silence all criticism, all exposure, all information that would give people a different view, a different version of what's going on, as opposed to the one the authorities want us to believe. That's how tyrannies work, all of them. And here we have the anti-establishment, anti-fascist mob using exactly the same techniques while perceiving itself in its self-deceit as the liberal left. And those genuine people on the left, and there are still some, must be aghast at what is happening around them and how the values of the movement that they stood for and still stand for have been usurped by the fascistic mob consumed by its own narcissism. This is, um, these two dictionary definitions of progressive and liberal. Uh, progressive, favouring or advocating progress, change, improvement or reform as opposed to wishing to maintain things as they are, especially in political matters. Now, on that basis, the Nazis could have claimed to be progressive on that definition. The dictionary definition, not the political definition, the dictionary definition of liberal is ooh, just a little bit different. It is something and someone that is favourable to or in accord with concepts of maximum individual freedom possible, especially as guaranteed by law and secured um, by a governmental protection of civil liberties, favouring or permitting freedom of action, especially with respect to matters of personal belief or expression. And that definition of liberal, which I absolutely share, is what is being deleted by this progressive, fascistic mob mentality. I remember in the 60s when masses of students at Berkeley University in California went on marches demanding freedom of speech. Now they go on protests demanding it's taken away and deleted. This is what I mean by the hijacking of the liberal left, by this progressive fascistic mob mentality. And so much of it has been done by the tens of billions of Soros money, a person that is said to be off limits for criticism by these people. This is an image of Berkeley today, where the debate comes down to you say something different from me, therefore you are a Nazi, a fascist and a bigot. Which is possibly the most blatant example of projection you'll ever see. It's like um, Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister, used to say, as part of his propaganda techniques, accuse the other side, basically, of that which you are guilty. And we see that um, all the time. 
And so fascism always works best when it calls itself anti-fascist. It calls itself anti-fascist to hide its fascism. And so we have these groups like uh, they call themselves Antifa, Antifa, whatever, who set out violently to um, destroy freedom of speech and they scream anti-hate with hatred all over their faces. Have you ever seen them? The anti-hate haters, I call them. Again, the inversion. Everything is um, inverted. And so they have put themselves in the same camp as people like this. The Nazis and the Stalinists and the tyrannies and dictatorships who have targeted freedom of speech whenever they've come to power. And now it's being targeted <laughs> by the anti-fascists. It's an extraordinary transformation. It's happened in such a short time, but when you put in tens of billions of dollars into it, well, I guess you can make it happen in a short time. So this is what's happening. We've got the slaves fighting the slaves for the benefit, who benefits, of the slave owners. And this is now the relationship and the dynamic between the 1% and the anti-1%. This is what the 1% does to the progressive mentality. We now have progressives, pseudo fake, liberal left defending billionaires from criticism, defending major corporations, cheering them even when they delete the free speech with these internet giants like Google and Facebook. Well, yeah, right. Cheering them when they take away freedom of speech from people they don't agree with. But of course, they are naive enough, because you have to have terminal naivety to do this. They're naive enough to believe that it's gonna end there. No, no, they will be in the, they will be in the gun sites eventually. But why aren't they now? It's an interesting question. Why are people like me being targeted for deletion of freedom of speech, but not the anti-establishment progressives. Why? Because they're doing exactly, for now, what the establishment want, and thus they're not going to censor them, are they? The genuine left, the genuine left, what, what, what remains of the genuine left, they're the ones who are censored not the progressive left. And there is a quite a simple way to see why. And this is a, um, a story from a study, it was in mainstream newspapers in the last few days, that 60% um, of the British people in this study poll believed in one or more, quote, conspiracy theories. Which means what? They don't believe what the government's telling them. They don't believe what the media's telling them. Oh, how radical. Of course, it's blatantly obvious to them, because they have intelligence to, to look at it with their own minds. It's blatantly obvious to them that the media lie to us. And governments and authorities lie to us. 
And this figure, 60%, of course, is massively greater than it would have been before because something's happening. People are uh, breaking out of the stranglehold, the perceptual strangleholds that um, so many generations fell for of believing the official story of everything. They're now starting increasingly to question it. And when you question it, then the whole thing unravels and you see it's a nonsense most of the time. And um, there, was a, there was a story in The Guardian um, this week about how I've uh, united all the factions of Labour, uh, you know, about anti-Semitism. I mean, uh, uh, The Guardian, the, 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 the newspaper Bible of the anti-establishment, quote, establishment. The radical guardian. I've seen more radical jars of marmalade, personally. And what they were saying was, in, they were talking about this conspiracy, these conspiracy theories that people believe now. And they said, uh, and it's, it's, it seems that people that um, believe in conspiracy theories, they're also in favor of Brexit and Trump. Uh, so if you don't want to be ruled by a dark suit bureaucratic mafia in Brussels, most of which the public of the, uh, Europe can't even name, then you are somehow, you're of the right and you believe in conspiracy theories, you're of the right and you also, you also support Trump, so you're of the right. Well, they've got a problem with me, of course, because I'm vehemently pro-Brexit, real Brexit but also a, a, a massive critic of Trump, just another front man, owned by the same web that owned Bush and Obama and Blair and all of them. So I'm not sure they'll be able to compute that, but because it's a shade of, it's a shade of gray, it's very difficult for the progressive um, mentality to compute shades of gray, because all it sees is black and white. But what this is showing, this poll, is something that I've seen all around the world more and more and more as I've travelled since 2016. There is a wake-up coming and happening uh, of people. And, you know, when I was reading some of these articles this week, people that were at Watford, where they've, um, they're looking at the audience. I'm sure when they turned up, they expected to see far-right people. Oh, yeah, far-right. What did they find? I had to admit they found an entire spectrum of human age, background, culture, from young to old, all these different areas of life and walks of life, all in the audience in large numbers. Are they all racists? Progressive mentality? Eh? Are they all bigots and Nazis? Or is there or is the common denominator between them simply a mind of their own? Questioning rather than absorbing someone else's version of reality. And this is what they ask. Is it true? They don't just dismiss it because it's different to the norm. And that's what happens when you have a mind of your own. And the ability to think for yourself. And this is where the progressive left is. This is where all politics are, are, are right, centre, far right, far left, doesn't matter. They're all in this situation. Yesterday's people, yesterday's papers telling yesterday's news. Same old, same old, tired and predictable. Same way of looking at the world, left and right. And they're being left behind by a gathering awakening of people who are looking beyond that stunningly myopic way of looking at the world and everything. And there is a wake up happening. It's not a wake up happening in this group or that group or that group or this party or that party or whatever. It's an awakening happening among the great totality of human, uh, the human family, from endless backgrounds. And like I say, the common denominator of it is people who are beginning 
to take control of their minds back, take control of the perceptions back and look at the world in a different way and see if it stands up. And they're finding it does massively compared with the nonsense they've been given up to this point. While the mentality that's trying to silence me is going deeper and deeper and deeper to sleep. And the more they, the more they are sucked into their slumber, the easier they become for those that are inducing the slumber to give it that. And how appropriate this is, a quote by Gandhi. He said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And of course, I was laughed at in almost historic terms. Then for a period, like I say, I was ignored by the mainstream. And now it seems they want to fight me. But they can't fight me because it takes two to fight and I'm not interested. The information itself will speak for itself. And um, so first they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you which is wonderful news because it means there's only one stage left. 